button. Alright, so when you guys think of video games, uh, what beverage do you most associate with? Cyanide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> G Fuel. <laughs> Uh, that is correct. Mountain Dew, mm -hmm. the, the citrusy carbonated soft drink produced and owned by Pepsi, loaded with that precious sugar and caffeine to keep you gaming long into the night. Um, over the years, and especially during the era, uh, you know, we're about to talk about, um, the brand kind of became synonymous with our industry as well as the youths, uh, so much so that numerous partners would form, uh, famously their quote, um, or partnerships, I should say, sorry. Uh, but, uh, the, the game fuel line. Um, mm -hmm. That was uh, that would debut in 07 through a uh, cross promotion for the launch of Halo 3. Um, still got a case of those in my basement. Um, sometime later, uh, there were the Horde and Alliance flavors in uh, collaboration with Blizzard's uh, World of Warcraft. Then come deals for Call of Duty, Forza, Titanfall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not to mention there was that whole uh, Jeff Keighley incident with the Doritos. Mm -hmm. um, Gaming Pope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my point is, there was um, a relationship and it was here to stay. Side um, note. Mm -hmm. Alliance Mountain Dew. Listen, I'm Horde. Well, I'm, oh, I was about to say this. I'm yeah. Horde, <laughs> but that Alliance Mountain Dew is liquid gold. Oh, what no. Were the, the, what were the, I mean, the, the, the Horde. Two fla like well, the Horde one was just the Halo one rebranded. Yeah. Okay. And the, that Alliance, was the Alliance one is like raspberry lemonade or some shit. Or like all of the. Raspberry the, wild berry or something. The iterations of Game Fuel, that still the same taste. No. And then... They did one for Call of Duty that was like green. And then they brought it back for Xbox recently, and that was the oh. Halo one again. And then a Diablo 4 one, which was purple, but it was still the Alliance flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> now Game Fuel is just a it's a pre-workout thing. Yeah. Sugar-free, and it has, like, what's that shit in it? Uh, creatine, Creatine, probably. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, dude, I remember I was in college when uh, the Horde and Alliance came out, and they were giving it away for free on Rutgers campus. Mm -hmm. and I remember <laughs> drinking... I drank the Horde one. I was like, this is really good. Let me try the Alliance one. I absolutely love the Alliance one, but I forced myself to be like, this fucking sucks. I mean, the Horde one's still <laughs> it good. It doesn't align with, it my, doesn't align uh, with my principles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so back in 2014, our soda company would sponsor an event that quickly resulted in a disaster. In a period of already rising tensions just prior to the Gamergate, uh, uh, you know, movement uh, later that summer, a production known as the Mountain Dew Game Jam was, um, was thrown. And uh, on the surface, a charming little friendly competition between respected indie devs and media personalities that uh, you know, team up to create new projects together. Sounds innocent enough, right? Well, uh, let's just say in, in typical reality show-like fashion, the cast soon found themselves in a tumultuous position with the, uh, I, I guess, the crew, but not everyone in the crew, as um, you'll get into. One guy. Yeah, manufactured drama, sexism, a false bill of goods uh, on the prizes, uh, the filming was described as being a total nightmare. Uh, so where exactly did this all go wrong, though? Uh, Austin, uh, thankfully, Austin has the answers. One producer, <laughs> that sounds like. Yeah. But, uh, so this is Hot Button. I'm Randall Beatrice uh, in the room today with Chris Nudaboom. Hello. And Austin, as I said. You. Uh, shall we begin? Yes. And, and what's interesting to note for today is uh, for a story that features many recognizable figures, I feel like there wasn't a crazy amount of coverage on this. There isn't even a Wikipedia page, so we might educate a fair share of listeners on the topic. Yes. We and I, I will get to, page. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I will yeah. get to why there is a very great article. I'm just going to say this up top. I'm probably going to say this later because it's in my script. Mm -hmm. There's a very great article by a man named Jared Rosen who was both working for the company that put this production on and on the side, an indie game journalist himself for, okay. for a website right. called indie static. So he wrote up his experience being on set and that's how this got out there. Ah. And, um, as far as I'm aware, the article is only accessible through the Wayback machine. Oh, one of those. Cause okay. I think indie static is, isn't around anymore. Is gone. Yeah. Um, so, and, and real quick, uh, do you want to, Describe what a game jam That's is. That's exactly how I start my All script. Right, cool. yeah. We have said it on here before. Making games is very hard. Um, it yeah. requires designers, 2D artists, 3D artists, um, musicians, programmers, yeah. sound engineers, yeah, everything, testers. It takes a lot of people, a lot of money, Harder than a lot movies. of time. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, most of the games we've covered on Hot Button in the past took hundreds or thousands of people years to make. Um, but we as humans, just like with everything, thought, what if we made that way harder for fun? Enter the Game Jam. <laughs> a Game Jam is an event where organizers set a period of time, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a couple of weeks, and task developers with a theme. And then yeah. that theme, you have to make a game in that set amount of time as a team or as an individual with that theme. There's like an example was the one they did, like, what's a spin? I an have examples. spin on the first person shooter. Hold on, I have yeah. examples. The goal, the whole purpose of this is to give, is that creativity flourishes in constraint, basically. Yeah. Um, if you give, if you give an artist too much, uh, ev- forever right. to make something, they'll never finish it. But if you tell an artist that you have a week, they'll make something. Pressure makes diamonds. Exactly. Pressure makes diamonds. <laughs> you know, something like, um, you can't keep forming ideas. You have to commit to ideas be- at the beginning, and you have to stick to a scope because any added features add time, and you don't have a lot of time. Um, there's a couple. Uh, there's a lot of game jams, but I'm going to name a couple of yeah, the more the- famous ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the Nordic Game Jam. That's uh, mm-hmm. like in, it's in Denmark in Copenhagen. Right. That's a European, big European one. You have the Train Jam. Which is where they rent out a train and ever, all the developers develop on a train. What? Cool. Um, all right. And the creator of that game jam will come up because she was also a participant in our Neat. topic. Uh, Amnesia Fortnite, which is a, the <laughs> most famous example of an internal game jam where like a company's like, we need ideas. And then they just, when they release a game, they come up with, uh, they, they have their all their teams split up into a game jam and see which game is the most fun and then maybe build that into an actual thing that they sell. They are. Amnesia Fortnite is the double fine internal game jam. Okay. What, uh, wait, is there a reason why that's the name? Well, Fortnite because it's two weeks. Oh, I'm it's sorry. Not, it's uh, not the game Fortnite. The it's game has actual. ruined like, know, that word like permanently. <laughs> and Amnesia also is another game that's mm-hmm. popular, so I was like, yeah. what the fuck? To be fair, gonna... this... This uh, game jam existed after Amnesia: The Dark Descent, but mm. before Fortnite. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and the most famous of them all, Ludum Dare. And here is a list of games that you probably know that started out as game jam entries uh, and went on to be indie darlings, or as I call it, half of the Randy hit list. No, oh. uh, we have Wait, Tow- Towerfall. Okay, which Wait, was, but that was the we talked about that. That was in uh, the the Ouya Ouya episode. The Ouya yeah, game. Yeah. Uh, in the Vancouver Full Indie Game Jam in 2012, the theme was Alternate Universes, Donut County. Oh. Uh, in 2012, the Molly Jam, which was every game had to be based on a tweet of the parody Twitter account Maladu. Oh, we Peter Maladu. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Surgeon Simulator. We're all on Molly. Global right. Game Jam 2013, the theme was Sound of a Heartbeat. Gods Will Be Watching, Ludum Dare 26 <laughs> in 2013, the theme was Minimalism. Hollow Knight, Ludum Dare 27. Uh, 2013. The eh. theme was 10 seconds. <laughs> it started out as Hungry Night, and you had to eat the enemies to extend the time that you could play. Mm. Um, super yeah, hot. Away with that mechanic. That's the one. That's what I. Yeah. Yo. The seven day, <laughs> the seven day FPS challenge. The theme was make a SPF in seven days. Boy, did they nail the, yeah. the, the spit like the. And the, that was the in, concept. That like, was in 2013. It was, a, it was on a browser initially. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, we have. Keep talking and nobody explodes. That's the global game jam one. in yeah. 2014. The theme was we don't see things as they are; we see them as the, uh, we see them as we are. That was the theme. Right. Uh, Celeste, the four day game jam in 2016. The theme was climbing. Right. Baba is you. The, oh. the Nordic game jam in 2017. The theme was not there. And inscription, Ludum oh. Bear 43, what? 2018. The theme was sacrifices must be made. Holy sh- uh, that's it. They say that line in yep. the game. Yep. I didn't yeah. I didn't know inscription and Baba's mm-hmm. Uke came, yep. came out of Game Jam. That's wild. Here's also a list of Game Jam games from internal uh, Game Jams, not like public Game Jams, but Game Jams within companies or okay. between friends. We have Don't Star from Clay Entertainment. Yeah. Costume Quest and Stacking came from Amnesia Fortnite. Both double fine. Uh, both double fine. Uh, the Binding of Isaac came from an uh, oh, game jam Ed McMillan hosted with his friends, and Thomas was alone. Came with a came from a game jam that Mike Bithell hosted with his friends. And now that we understand what a game jam is, let's get on with our actual story. Is anybody familiar with Maker Studios? Game Maker? 
Not Game That's, Maker. <laughs> oh, no. Maker Studios was a YouTube content network. Sounds uh, awful. Home to, <laughs> so, home to uh, very famous creators, including, but not limited to, Mark's, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Captain Sparkles, JonTron, PewDiePie, the Yogg's cast, um, Penguin Zero, who everybody knows now as Moist Critical. Oh, yeah. And uh, Ray William Johnson. That's, so, a lot, wait, wait, that's, a, that's a lot of money. This was, this was like a holdings company that owned the rights to their content and then probably just hooked them up with sponsorships. Is it? Yeah. It's essentially a, a content network. They're not as popular now on YouTube, but yeah, it's yeah, they're, basically they're, they're brothels. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like in an this example, like an the YouTubers are the yeah. We, yeah, yeah. we pay for you to go to events and we find you sponsors and then you, we get a revenue split of your a lot of these YouTube people are on a level where they don't even need that anymore. <laughs> like, it's, and a lot of these people aren't with this network. Um, I would say well, most of them, and we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, in 2013, uh, Indie Statics, John Mattingly, and Game Jolt founder David DeCarmine. John came, Madden and David DeCovney? No. Came up with an idea, <laughs> which G- Maker Studios picked up on. Game jams are cool. And they, are? they, you know, they work for Indie Static, which is the indie magazine that I mentioned. Well, indie website that I mentioned. And we've been to a lot of game jams, and they're, it's, they're a lot of fun to watch, even if you're not a game dev. So what if we turn that okay. into a show, you know? Okay. And we and now when Maker Studios picked it up, the idea then becomes, oh, well, we have these creators who play video games, and so we can get them screen time, but uh, and we can also give the best big air worlds. quotes exposure to a bunch of game developers. Mm. And as you, as you will know, when I get to the list of participants, none of these people needed exposure, but thus game underscore jam was born. That's how it's written. Uh, That's how it's written out. Yes. Yeah. Now I want to note here, um, as you mentioned in your intro, yeah. um, this will come a little later in the story, but it was sponsored by Mountain Dew. It was never officially known as the Mountain Dew game jam. That is a colloquial term that people called it after the disaster. <laughs> Game Jam, Game Underscore Jam, sponsored by Mountain Dew. Correct. Okay. Um, and internally, before um, before they decided on the title that it would be known as on like TV, it was called the Green Label Game Jam. Green Label being a sub brand of Mountain Dew designed to produce sp- sponsored content. So <laughs> when you were ta- when you were predicting earlier before we got on to recording. You were kind of right. Okay. Mountain Dew yeah. has a label where they're like, we're going to go after gamers. Yep. It's called Green Label. And yeah. So wait, did, did Game Maker approach Mountain Dew yeah, who about called doing who this first? show? <laughs> uh, they must have caught wind of it or like, something. Like, how, how or why did a YouTube channel think that they knew anything about putting together a TV show? That we'll, is it. We'll get there. Yeah. Okay. A, put, throwing like a production like that into like I think people really underestimate how much it takes to make a TV show or a movie or any kind oh, of, of course like yeah, anything yeah. that goes on cable besides network television network television is like public network television yeah yeah yeah, yeah. is like no the, putting that I think that's the, that's the extent basic, of like what you and your friends can put together yeah in terms of TV and it's very visible the quality difference between well, like here you need lights and mics and yeah okay that. so maker has a sub-brand called Polaris. And Polaris is a production... Wait, is, is it Polaris like a camera company? Polaris is... Uh, they make um, ATVs. Oh, okay. But that's a yeah, different yeah. Polaris. Different Polaris. <laughs> different Polaris. Uh, <laughs> that would yeah, have made yeah. the show cooler, though. Yeah. Everybody's riding around. Everybody but, ATVs. <laughs> <laughs> and that... So they had a studio, like a warehouse in LA that was a production studio that, like... Didn't get much use because YouTubers don't need a studio. They just do it from home. House, yeah. So here is a quote from Jared Rosen of Indie Static. One of many quotes from this guy from the article that I mentioned. The entire building had been converted into a gigantic branded reality show set, complete with a judge panel, a stage for the four teams, color-coded workstations with computers, and conspicuous Mountain Dew signage. <laughs> Developers from across the indie spectrum had been flown to L.A., with the intention to live and work in four gigantic Winnebago's that were being refueled and restocked with water, electricity, and supplies every few hours. And Mountain Dew. An entire, <laughs> yeah. an entire second production company and a small mercenary army of creative consultants zipped around the stages while dozens of TV-quality cameras hovered unblinking over the central floor. The production 
uh, was handed to veteran producers Aaron Umatani and Jason Serrato. Uh, and yeah. as I mentioned, they work for Polaris and a couple other Polaris employees, including our rep- indie game reporter Jason Jared Rosen, were there as well. Mm. Here's where Mountain Dew comes in. Maker isn't in the business of just putting on you making YouTube videos. They're in the business of making money. And how do you make money when you have a YouTube video that uh, requires ad- an advertising? In- exactly. <laughs> yeah. More specifically, branding. Yeah. And what's the dream branding for a game related you said it in the intro? Yeah. Mountain Dew. Or known as MTN Do now. Yeah. Well Pep- stupid. PepsiCo, technically. Yeah, yeah as you said. <laughs> um, Sorry, I haven't gotten over that. I, I don't even drink Mountain Dew, but I, I uh, mm-hmm. the age of abbreviating things and removing all the vowels. I mentioned game jams have time limits, so the competition was set to run for four days right. and would obviously include game development, uh, but also events where teams were asked to perform, quote, tasks related to game development and win <laughs> prizes. And this is a quote from Adriel Wallach, who is one of the indie devs. It's like survivor she, challenges or she something? She is the creator of the train jam I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, every prize for our mini challenges was a branded prize. Mountain Dew colored lawn chairs, cases of Mountain Dew, etc. <laughs> Even the grand prize, a year supply of Mountain Dew, a trip to a Mountain Dew sponsored extreme sporting event in Breckenridge, Colorado, and access to ID at Xbox. Oh, wow. And then parentheses, something nearly all of the contestants already owned, and if not, could get with a single phone call. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's a good point. Yeah, it's not hard to sign (laughs) up for ID at Xbox. I did it before. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It was so overly corporate and bro culture that it was just uncomfortable. How much? So I remember we were joking about this in the Avent Rising episode with the Sobe Water thing. How how much do you think a year supplies worth of Mountain Dew is? Oh, uh, hold on. I'll, I'll math it it's, out. Yeah, it's there's a way to figure it out. Really? They, they have math for this shit. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you can't just order Mountain Dew eternally for life. That's, yeah. I, I, and I, I know this because uh, at, at one point, one of the guys on Kind of Funny, Tim, used to drink a LaCroix every day. Mm-hmm. And a fan <laughs> entered yeah. him in a contest for a year's supply of LaCroix as a joke, and he won. Holy shit. And then there were just videos of Kind of Funny complaining because they sent them all that LaCroix at once, and they didn't have a big studio, so they didn't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> and I think they still have LaCroix oh, man. to this day. And then they counted it to see, like, you know. Uh-huh. Like, oh, that's funny. Man, like, oh, never mind. I'm, I'm sure you're going to get into it. But it's like the... The mini challenges is such a distraction away from like. Oh, I'm gonna get into it yeah. right now. <laughs> okay, Man, um, it's gotta be so fucking now, annoying. You're like in the middle of coding, and someone's like, "Oh, throw these rings over it." <laughs> like, not to put the cart before the horse, but we don't know what all the challenges were going to be. Um, oh yeah, so I guess I should. I, this, this got s- stopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it? assuming that that a human drinks a two liter of Mountain Dew every other day, mm-hmm. it's roughly three hundred and sixty three dollars. To get a year supply, that sounds less impressive written out that way. If you drink a two <laughs> liter a day, worded like, and uh, they usually do. It's usually like a case a day. A case a day. Yeah, or or like a twelve pack, like a fridge you, pack a day. Do you think? That's do you think lot. when they do these calculations, mm-hmm. they take into consideration like the the recommend the recommendation for a Absolutely human's not, average no. caloric intake? No, like they're like, oh, according to what humans should drink. You should only drink one Mountain Dew a day because we contain 80% of your daily I've sugar read, and carbs. Doctors recommend. Yeah. I've read a lot of accounts of people on like the Price is Right and shit that won like your supplies of something yeah. and it always expires. They send you way too much. Uh, well, really? yeah, because it's so cheap to oh, make. Yeah. Why would they send it all at once? See, I always thought they, like well, that, in the well, how, uh, no. or like it would, If you win a year supply of McDonald's, they, well, give, yeah. you, they give you coupons. Prepared food. If you yeah. win a year supply of a product that they can send you, they send it to you all, all at once. once. Like a pallet, listen to a pallet of Mountain Dew. That's like such a burden of a, like, of a yeah. prize. Why, why don't they give them like, I can understand why, right? Th- those prizes are uh, literally tantamount to nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, whereas like getting them a real prize, like, like I don't know, maybe the next game that you develop will guarantee you it'll get published by this developer well, or by, by this publisher. What that's, what the, that's what these people thought the access to ID at Xbox was. Yeah. But all ID at Xbox and pay is, hundred bucks. you pay a hundred bucks yeah. a year. And you can turn your Xbox into a dev, a dev That's yeah. all idea oh. Xbox actually That's is. That's something it's like very, I've done it. There's no, like, you don't it's very easy to get access have to, to apply for it, really. So, it's just a, 
You're you're already already developing you might have in 2014. It might have been harder to get in 2014. Oh, yeah. but like, I don't remember still. when that's I did like, it. These like, people definitely already had it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, that's like having a, a, a Battle cool. of the Bands competition and the winners get like a drum kit and a guitar. Like they already have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not why they're there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're hoping for connections. For like, yeah. yeah with, okay. <laughs> it's a networking. Now, uh, these, uh, we don't, as I said, we don't know what all the challenges were going to be, but <laughs> yeah. we do have some. The challenges included... We're not limited to a Let's Play where the YouTuber had to do a Let's Play of one of the games the devs on their team had released. A, a previous game. Yeah. Okay. Like Mark Applier doing a sure. Let's Play of Stanley Parable, which is, I'm sure he had already done at that there point. Is like a, yeah. is like a, you're promoting like something. Yeah. No, this is just a reality show challenge and the judges are judging. Uh, <laughs> how do you judge, how do you judge a, a Let's Play? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Stupid. Well, hold on. Arts and crafts projects. Uh, an obstacle course. <laughs> it's like a macaroni art of yeah. thing. Complete with traffic cones. Um, like a physical obstacle course? Yes. And, and the get this is my favorite one. This is the one everybody shouts out when they talk about this. Having to work without power for 30 minutes. In a game On jam. A g- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I knew that. Yeah. That part of... Well, I mean, I... I mean, th- like this chapter of the yeah. tale. Uh, that's I kn- literally every part of game development involves electricity. <laughs> some, some no, kind. no, we're gonna make them go pen and paper on yeah. it. Pen so you, and paper. you just sit there in the dark and wait it out until you get fucking power back. You it's just, real exciting. I guess you just talk about ideas and you hand draw some sh- some yeah. sprites or something. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, that won't slow yeah. down like uh, progress, but. Uh, there's only there's one other big a couple things from this I do know, but that's. Plain ridiculous. Yeah. Additionally, participants were asked to pose with Mountain Dew products for promo shots <laughs> and were not allowed to drink anything other it, than yep. Mountain Dew the, while filming. You knew that. That's, that's the one the I know one. Of, of people like like filling out like like even water. They had a they like, had a they water had, right? fountain in the building <laughs> yeah. and people were dumping out Mountain Dew into the water fountain and filling it with water so they could drink water. Yeah. Because they weren't that, allowed to drink anything other than the can. Yeah, that's what that's Dehydrate what you normally the fuck do. out of yeah. you after a well, while. No, normally, like if you if you go to like um like Warp Tour or something, and it's sponsored by Rockstar. Yeah, it's just water bottles with their logo on. Yeah. Them. Well, yeah. no, they make monster cans and fill them with water. water. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. But they, the company cans, actually though. does that for I you. I thought it was like mm-hmm. I was yeah. picturing like the plastic. Co- you know, you see like Gatorade in or something, and it's mm-hmm. like just water. But no, they had to be cans, and the logo had to be facing the camera. <sighs> Fuck. Um. Now, <laughs> we are not yet started, but production is already estimated to cost somewhere between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. Shit. Just to set up this warehouse. Okay. Um, now, do they bring their own PCs? No. They had a computer set up, and we will get to that. Huh. Uh, the competition would be as such. We have four YouTubers and 12 game developers. They would be split up into four teams. Each team would have one YouTuber and three game devs. Okay. And they, What is the YouTuber meant to really do? Ideas. And, and on camera stuff. Okay. Wait, Randy, that's a great question. Yeah, in general, yeah. what do YouTubers do? <laughs> for, for society. What, what do you say you do here? <laughs> I mean, point. we we, talk, we talked about the... Te- more streamers. The, we talked about the tester, nothing, but- the tester, the PlayStation reality show they did. Yeah. And nobody yeah, watched yeah. that until the third season when they got a bunch of Twitch so streamers on it and Ego Raptor as well. I assume like, is, the, is the, the media personality, let's say that, like, are they the liaison between like all of these like they're just the people they, working in the trenches, or are they just meant to add some they're just spice they're, into the? These people have to be on camera, and game devs might not be good at being oh. on camera. So, so I think the premise here well, is the fact that they, since like, Game Maker is putting this together, be, but... right? Game Maker's wheelhouse is that they basically own the rights to these YouTubers, right? So, uh, so from my perspective, when they're putting this together, they're probably thinking very low of the game developers and very high of the YouTubers. Yes. So the uh, idea is that by pairing them together, you'll have this eccentric, popular YouTuber that'll help give you great ideas to make your product. But they have, but like for the most part, most YouTubers don't know jack shit about programming. No. Unless it yeah, is a programming YouTube all. channel, uh, right? Yeah. And like mm-hmm. that's why I yeah, thought I was like, oh, are they just the team to, representative? Like, here's me, the hype man for your group. Yeah, to me, it sounds very um, like uh, denigrating. <laughs> I kind of feel <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah. You know, okay. I probably just got annoyed. So let's go through our cast here. Yeah, we have indie devs. We have Davy yeah. Raiden, creator of the Stanley Parable, oh. Adriel Wallach, who I already mentioned, 
uh, who was one of the pro- original programmers on Among Us, also the creator huh. of Train Jam. There was only like five people that made that game, yep. right? So he's, he was one of them. She. She, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Tom Jackson, one of the creators of Surgeon Simulator. Uh, Robin Arnault, the creator of Antichamber. Uh, Zoe Quinn, creator of Depression Quest. Yes, I knew she was on there. Yeah. Kale Bradbury, who I hadn't heard of until this, uh, created a game called Sound Self. Um, mm. The Arcane Kids, which was an indie collective. The only one of them that you will probably know is Ben Esposito, the creator of Donut County. No, whoa. And Neon White. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, and then three additional students who won a contest at uh, USC's game design school. That's still pretty stacked. Yeah. Like a huh, lot of yeah. very, and like, Big people. you know, and Ant, still actively like among us had yet to come or among us sure, I think, yeah, had yeah, yet to come out. Uh, Antichamber had yet to come out. Donut County, nor neon white had come out. I guess it's a good point. This is uh, uh, Stanley parable. I believe was out in its di- like mod form, but not out as a game yet. Okay. So like, so this is like this is like all the bands that were on the Burnout Three soundtrack before exactly, they yeah. exploded. <laughs> you're you're always going on about the Burnout Three soundtrack. <laughs> it is I'll, great. I'll never stop. Uh, our gaming YouTubers were uh, Markiplier, John yes. Tron, yep. Captain Sparkles, and Yogg's Cast streamer Sam Strippen. The only one I'm not entirely familiar with is Captain Sparkles. Very popular. Yeah. yeah. For the kids? Yeah, you can't, you can't go by a middle school without seeing it. Yeah, so it's too old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, the judges for our competition are YouTuber Angry Joe Vargas. He's a judge? Yeah. Okay. Kelly Santiago, co-founder of That Game Company. Oh. And Mark Essen, the creator of Nidhogg. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Huh. So, uh, what, are the, what role do the judges play exactly? They're judging the challenges and also the games. The end. Okay. And I think also they're like kind of hosts, which is why Angry Joe is there. Right, yeah. Yeah. Are they do, are they kind of helping them out? Like, does anybody... Got, never mind. Just, I don't know. Um, now, before we get to the actual filming, we have one more topic to cover. Our villain. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie Lesham. Maddie Lesham. Lesham was the CEO of a branding company who had been hired by PepsiCo... To sell their products. Um, At any cost. Because of the pervasive sponsorship, Lesham ended up as a consultant on the set for the show, which reports vary, but it seems like he really wanted to get it out of branding and into TV production. And so... Yeah, I mean, where was this going to air on? Like, it was just going to be TV. on... TV. Whoa, this was actually... TV and YouTube. Well, it was undecided, but okay. they, were, they were preparing for... G4 both was still around at this time? Yeah. Now, here's another quote from Jared Rosen article. Somehow, he had ended up as the most visible director on set, as well as what was described to me as a, quote, Pepsi consultant. I quickly Walking took, around in a clip with a clipboard. In the seat. I quickly took from his posture and the way people were interacting with him that he would spearhead the tone, the filming, and the brand friendliness of the affair. But uh-huh. I was wrong. He ended up being a creative consultant who had somehow slipped into the project through the connections of the sponsors, and was the de facto guy by virtue of being the loudest. I can picture it. Yeah. And, and I, I, like, assuming he probably doesn't care about video games really either. Definitely not. Like, I, yeah, I highly doubt that this was a, it was passion coming from him. Before filming could begin, contracts need to be signed. You don't just walk onto a set. There's a lot of legalese. Yeah, I know that from my mom. Um, you know, and this TV. is where our problems begin. Um, I found this in a Reddit thread of none of the devs were allowed to work on their own projects during the filming or in the two week lead up to the filming since they would be then quote, make making a competing product. But what if it's, they're completely independent. It's for themselves. Doesn't matter. Uh, their travel. I I know there's like non compete ship, but that's just silly. Their travel and board would be paid for the filming, but they're also contractually obligated to attend interviews and press events for the show after filming, and travel for those would be out of pocket. What? For how long? They're not going to come to you promoting their shit? Yeah. Uh, And, of course, they couldn't sue if they were, in quote, intentionally misrepresented for dramatic effect. That's reality television for you. Uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Now... You have to understand, and this is taken from... Power of editing. I think this is taken from a Polygon article. Um, you have to understand that, like, if you're on The Bachelor or Survivor or something like that, you're just a dude. Mm. 
these people are when you're an indie developer, you are in essence your own brand, right? Yeah, I mean like you're the company. I, you're the face. When I read off when I read off names like Davey Raiden and 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 at Ben Esposito, like you know their names because you love Donut County and you yeah. know who made that. Yep. You know, we like the Stanley Parable. So like being intentionally misrepresented could fuck your entire career could fuck up. your entire yeah. career up as opposed to just like making you a villain on Twitter. It's, you know? it's a mismatch. Yeah. Right? Like um he clearly didn't understand the concepts of like not at all the, the yeah. space whatsoever, right? Yeah, because they were just applying be, that the if, same way they would wanted, another, any other. If you other wanted to show. stir up drama and make things like more entertaining, uh, an alternative way, I think he could have done that without uh, basically trying to fuck over these devs is maybe like releasing live birds into the yeah right no, no like doing <laughs> doing something like some other kind of hurdle that they have to get over that he changes midway right which is like all right guys. Everyone's game has to be a first person shooter now. Like dumb shit like that that kind of tests their skills as opposed to making them look like shit. Yeah, oh. I mean, that's what that's like. The and I'm not trying to say that like oh, that's oh. what I did begin with. We'll get to his yeah. solution. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. It's yeah. not good. <laughs> I, I just looked him up by the way. I'll I'll, I'll read off his biography in a bit. Uh, okay. no. I, I will I will hand the floor over to you when we get to the end. Keep, okay. keep it up. But, yeah. uh, what's, what's he look like? I want he, to know. <laughs> Imagine what he looks like. That's what he looks like. Right. Um, he, he's also he was also like fifty two at the time. Yeah. Well, he's sixty one now. Right. Yeah. yeah. So ten years ago, he would have been fifty one. Yep. Yeah. He's fifty one years old. Yeah. After Can't being delayed a couple of days due to contract negotiations, the contracts were then settled to where they can no longer be misrepresented, and they were allowed to work on their own games. Mm. In the meantime, and filming officially began in March of twenty fourteen. How far did they get? Um, <laughs> the competition started off fine in the first couple hours. The teams were decided and development began. Uh, now here's Robin Arnault, quote from Polygon article. We all understand it was, the f- it was a first, a show, and second, a game jam. Our bullshit meters were hanging at about 15 to 20% going in, but that seemed worth it in order to demonstrate something magical to the public. We knew there would be challenges that would be bullshit, but as long as we were working with our friends and showcasing... What is magical about our community? We were fine. Our whole interaction with anybody before the jam went down was nothing but respectful and excited. Cool. But within those first few hours, a couple of red flags started popping up. Here's one of my other favorite bits. (laughs) The computers that they used were not purchased for the event because this is a YouTuber studio. They were just reusing things that YouTube computers that YouTubers use to stream and stuff and record videos and edit videos. And it turned out that the copies of the Adobe software that was loaded onto the computers for the competition were pirated <laughs> and production had to that be. That wasn't in the, the $500,000 like. Uh, production had to be delayed budget? when one of the USC students plugged a USB drive into the computer and the computer got a virus and corrupted the USB drive. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and all the copies of the Adobe software had to be removed and Windows had to be reinstalled. Oh, man, that's great. Uh, our second red flag, challenge one, was, was as I said, the team YouTuber has to make a Let's Play. For this, they were not provided the microphones or cameras or anything that a typical YouTuber would use. They were given branded gaming headsets. Oh, uh, and the headsets were of such poor quality <laughs> that Markiplier cheated by using his phone to record his voice, which gave his team an advantage since the phone mic from 2014, mind you, not phone mics now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. was leagues better. Hey, that's just smart. Audio. That's how you, yeah. that's how you beat the that's system. That's smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. It, it, like, it doesn't sound like any of this was rehearsed. Yeah. <laughs> like, they didn't test anything out. And then, and then development continues. The challenges continue. Here's a quote from Angry Joe. It was becoming clear to the indie devs that in between these stupid reality TV challenges that involved weird shit like traffic cones and time challenges and random chaos where all of a sudden a development team would be forced to work without power for 30 minutes while trying to make a fucking game made for an impossible environment to actually create the fucking games. Yeah, he's he's totally right. Um, I think it'd be way more interesting to just show the process of making a game. Yeah. That's our, I, I, well, I think to a 51 year old out of touch TV executive guy, it's like, that's going to be, that's not you're not going to find that compelling, but the yeah. your audience is people that are interested in that. It, yeah, I'd rather see like people like you know who make games making games than running 
around traffic cones or yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <it's>... Now, <laughs> in addition to these challenges, our boy Matty Lesham was beginning his uh, oh, yeah. his, his hell. Um, Davey was forced to take off his nail polish because it was green and he couldn't hold the can of Mountain Dew with the nail polish on. Uh, Zo- <laughs> what? Uh, what? Zoe Quinn was asked to take off the buttons on her jacket, but then got into a shouting match with a PA who tried to give her a new jacket that would cover her tattoos. Mm. Uh, the arcane kids. That's so conservative. I the <laughs> arcane kids were screamed at for not holding the Mountain Dew bottles right. While the entire group was lectured on how to properly smile like you were enjoying the product. You okay. mean like logo out? Yeah. Did, did they have to go? <sighs> I think oh, so. Yeah. I so. Uh, a product that everyone was enjoying less and less as the day went on. Of course. You're going to get sick of anything eventually. I, I would kill to be. <laughs> Hold on. Be so, oh, the slow train wreck of faces flipping into scales marked only the beginning of what would soon into an, turn into an utter shit show. That's Jared Rosen's quote. <laughs> oh, my God. I wouldn't be the Foley guy in this show. So every yeah. time they open up like a can oh, yeah, of Mountain Dew, yeah. it's just like, no, it sounds like it's exploding. <laughs> like. <laughs> There, I think you have somebody. Uh, so, you have, sorry, sorry, you have to do this in post. You have to edit down my. <laughs> no, you have an assistant. You have an assistant running around with a spray bottle adding condensation to yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> make yeah. it look appetizing. And every time they drink, it's just, <sighs> you know, like oh. Now, uh, the devs were stopped again uh, to begin their second challenge, an arts and crafts project, to be judged by the judges, and the producers could tell that the devs were already tired. Yeah, I'm uh, probably fucking annoyed. And annoyed. And their hearts weren't in it. Most of the, wait, sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. What's the arts and crafts project? Did they I don't know. Really? Ma- macaroni yeah, art. Yeah, something yeah, that's like that. What I said before. Like I, craft paper or something. I don't know. Making games is already art. Like, I know. Dude, making, you know what would be sick? If they made paper mache pinatas. Remember making those? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those things were dope. No, Imagine it's, trying it's, to program yeah. after you have all the glue in your oh, oh. No, it's just cootie catchers. <laughs> <laughs> Now, most of the producers, when they saw how tired the devs were, they felt pretty bad and thought maybe we should take a break. Uh, Matty Leshen decided uh, he had a different idea. See, uh, in reality TV, it's very often good to get the people tired because people get angry yes, and aggravated. you become more irritable you and get grumpy. hungry and, yeah. Yeah, and sleepy. Yeah. And this is when... This program needs some fighting. Yes, this yeah. is when something became very apparent. That's you see, That's where I first heard about this. I don't have a list of who was on whose team. Only accounts. I was of, curious. Yeah. Only accounts. Uh, that's not but out there. Just four teams. When the teams five. were decided, Jared Rosen reports Lesham uh, had input that nobody else knew and put together John Tron and Zoe Quinn. Uh, this was seemingly told to the contestants that the teams were random, uh, but production quickly proved that not to be the case as Maddie Lesham and his camera crew kept approaching the two. And cornering them to make comments about one another. Does anybody know why this would be a problem? Well, their politics being yes. different. Yeah, and they, knew, was but right, they knew ahead of time. This like, was right after John Tron's controversy where he did the oh, right wing stuff yeah, on a, yeah, on a yeah. podcast. Okay. And it was also right at the beginning and, of and Gamer Games. Zoe Quinn, also very outspoken about yes. there. Yeah. Oh, um, so, so that is absolutely intentional. That yes. Is, that was correct. Uh, now, to both, the of their, to both of their credits. Uh, they did not give into it, right? Like the, the two, the two did not realize that this was on purpose, but they did realize that the two of them being on a team together could be a problem. Like, wait a minute, we both been had. <laughs> so before production even started, the two got together in a room and talked it out in private, deciding not allow their differing viewpoints to taint this opportunity. Okay, that's dignified. Yes, yeah. And it was to him. it came to a head when at one point John Tron left to do something. I don't know what, go to the bathroom, whatever. And on his way back, was cornered into a separate room and pressured into saying something negative about Zoe Quinn. <laughs> Yo, I heard she called you a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's <isn't> like. <laughs> uh, John Chan refused, and this angered Lesham. I'm sure it did. Uh, now, here's a quote. Uh, this was only the beginning for the manufactured reality TV drama. Uh, here's a quote from Robin Arnault. They thought they would be able to get a bunch of developers together and put them in a weird situation and turn them against each other which is very against indie culture. It is mind-blowing they didn't see this coming, and they thought it was a good idea. We all help each other out. There are interpersonal connections. People can argue, 
but they were so off the mark by what they thought they were going to get out of us. As soon as they tried to pit us against each other, they realized, oh, no, this isn't going to work. It's a friendly competition. Yeah. They all work in the same field. Yep. Like, yeah. you know, not to encourage one another. Like, I feel like they're, like, just seconds away from just being like, all right, new challenge. We crank the heat all the way up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> we turn off the AC and let the computers cook them alive. Yeah, yeah. Then they'll exactly. start killing each other. <laughs> Lesham was not happy that his Zoe Quinn John Tron, it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thing wasn't working. Uh, but the dude <laughs> should have played itself. But the dude clearly had Gamergate on the brain, mm. and he quickly uh, brainstormed a quick idea. You see, of the 16 participants... Meet our I'm, special guest, Anita Sarkeesian. <laughs> of the 16 participants I mentioned, there were only two female devs, Adriel Wallach and Zoe Quinn, yeah. and they were both on separate teams. This meant that two of the teams were entirely male, and then two of the teams each had a single female. Anyone of color? I don't know how... <laughs> the uh, representation no. here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lesham first went to the two all-male teams and asked, quote, two of the other teams have women on them. Do you think they're at a disadvantage? Ugh. Oh, my God. Fuck off. Mark Applier answered uh, diplomatically, saying the teams actually had a huge advantage as they have more viewpoints and different ideas. Ah, he saw through that. Oh, though, everyone, yeah. though everyone is strong regardless because there's a lot of skill in the room. Say what you will about John Tron, and I have, but that was a good response oh, man. in the moment. He did not, like, take the bait even yeah, he, by accident. He, like, that's he, the thing. It's like, even you could be, your heart could totally be in the right place and then be like, and, and if you just stutter for a second, it'll look, that was, some de- like, that was some deaf navigation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Kudos to Markiplier. The dude's a pro. Yeah. Um, or that was Markiplier. That was Markiplier. Oh, yeah. I thought it was John Tron. I'm sorry. No, no, that's Markiplier. Okay, that makes sense coming from Markiplier. Yeah. yeah. That was... That was a... When I watched... Uh, I saw a comment section on an article about this, and they're like, they thought they could get, like, the nicest YouTuber... Yeah, yeah YouTuber to talk of all shit. time to talk shit about yeah, people. Yeah. Like, And um, he's used to, like, on the cuff having to... Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. He wasn't done there. He inc- he continued to go around to other people who weren't as nice as Markiplier and ask questions like, is Zoe off her game? Are women coders a disadvantage? Oh, my God. What, um, this is 2015. Wow. This infuriated the groups, obviously, no shit. as they were trying to work, and Lesham reportedly said, stop filming. We're not getting a story here. Um, <laughs> stop. Wait, wait, really? Yeah. Uh, but he what wasn't done, uh, and he went to the other two teams. These are the two teams with the girls on them. Yeah. And said, do you think you're at an advantage because you have a pretty girl on your team? <laughs> Gross. Mm-hmm. Uh. I would like to take an aside here. I'm going to give you a little background on Adriel Wallach. Um, right. Women should not have to prove themselves by being better than men. Yeah, obviously. But she was the best programmer in the room. <laughs> Before Adriel Wallach got a job in games, she worked for Lockheed Martin developing satellites. Whoa. So, her, vi- so video games must be a passion then, because I bet that probably well, paid better. Yeah, it definitely yeah. paid more. <laughs> yeah. And her first job outside of that was working on Rock Band Blitz. Oh, fuck and yeah. And then after Rock Band Blitz, she went to Among Us. Woo. And then she started the train jam. So yeah. she fucking rules and yeah. is very good at her job, clearly, because yeah. I... Could not do a satellite programming. <laughs> um, uh, he didn't get any response from any of them initially, but he kept pressing. Um, How do you not just snap back? Uh, well, I'm eventually, sure. Robin Arnaud, who was uh, on the team with Adrian Wallach, uh, spoke up and said basically what I said. He said, like, we are at an advantage. Wallach is the best programmer here. Yeah. Um, Lesham didn't like that answer. These are not reality show contestants yeah. that you can manipulate it and like. So he they kept want, like. he kept prodding, <laughs> and eventually he got a very understandable rise out of Adrian Wallach. Um, and here yeah. is her quote after the fact: "He got me to with an embarrassed and flushed red face, launched into a statement about how his questions is indicative of everything that is wrong in our industry in terms of sexism. No, we weren't at an advantage because we had a woman on our team." We were at an advantage because I'm a damn fine programmer and game developer. We were at an advantage because my skills allowed us to be in an advantage, not my, quote, pretty face. He had the audacity to approach me later and explain that it wasn't personal. This wasn't a personal attack on me. He knew this was a sensitive topic in the industry and wanted to address it. Well, you know what? It was personal. You sat there and questioned my skills, my intelligence, and my life. 
It was so personal that I can't even wrap my head around the fact that someone could even pretend to believe that this wasn't a personal attack. Yeah. Uh, And then Jason Rosen, who saw the apology, said, Maddie pulled back his camera, making sure to privately half apologize and said that he, quote, marched with the women in the 70s with, quote, flowers in his hair. No, some of my best friends were women. Yeah. Some of my best (laughs) friends. One of my friends is gay. (laughs) It's like the, the I first... I think at least we called him that. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Called, we called him gay all in the 90s. Oh, I marched man. with women in the 70s. Yeah. Did you? Mm-hmm. Did you? Oh, really... I meant against them. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, the... uh, I guess... <laughs> yeah. He felt bad, but not bad enough, because shortly after, they took a break for dinner, and on her way to dinner, uh, Lesham cornered Zoe Quinn with a camera... And tried to ask her the same question. She just said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the right response. Um, <laughs> Completely justified. So after this, Wallach and Quinn walked out. The production crew came up with other excuses for the exit and tried to continue filming. Um, they lost one of the, the cone challenges. I'm sorry, then. Yeah, she broke her leg. She, she <laughs> stepped over a cone and now she's gone. <laughs> and We tried to get her. A- to, to program on their laptops and run a marathon at yeah. the same time. And, uh, she was, she was programming on Linux and an <laughs> yeah. entire computer exploded because no one understands it. We caught them drinking Sierra Mist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a PepsiCo product. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, okay, and then one by one, other devs walked out too. Whether they were frustrated themselves or they're just pissed off about losing teammates or yeah. the women yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah, it's now, snowballing. I've been using a lot of quotes from him, uh, but I cannot I cannot reword this any better than Jared Rosen does because it is so well written, and uh, like I said, it's a brilliant article, and it's only accessible by the Wayback Machine. So I got to put this into audio. Here's a full quote. Try not to interrupt me because okay. I love this quote. <laughs> it took around twenty minutes for the man with flowers in his hair to storm out of the building, sans job, his trilby, director scarf, and lit e-cigarette, marking the last time I'd see him. But the damage was done. Akira Thompson and Kelly were rapidly notified of the brewing situation. Zoe pulled me aside with Davy and Tom as she basically demanded Maddie's head on a stick. Adriel was livid. Robin wanted blood. As the developers shared experiences with others over dinner that the others didn't know about, a strange thing began to happen between them that once solidified what games were all about and doomed Polaris and Maker at the same time. They formed ranks and revolted. The rest of the night was an odd blur to the Polaris folks. Maker production staff and YouTubers trying to wrap their heads around what was happening. We were able to film the final walk before the judges, but that was the end of it. Many folks tried to offer compromises, change the program block entirely to game development, powwow on fake lawns outside of each of the four Winnebago's as I chain smoked American spirits and scanned faces. <coughs> Adriel and Zoe stuck to their guns and everyone stuck with them. They wouldn't be associating their names with a company that hired people like Maddie, even though he was fired even though he was a consultant, the energy was too low. The products of a hypothetical game gym at this point wouldn't meet their own standards, and the programming showed a lack of understanding that made it difficult to get behind. Which is just like, yo, we're not even going to accept the compromise. They fired this guy. It's like, no, mm. no, we're gonna we're gonna take yeah. the fucking ship mm. down. And guess what? Like <laughs> they did. They, did. Yeah. They, they took it. They took it down, and they cost this company five hundred thousand dollars in a, a useless set. That rules. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Now, day two of filming. You're not going to hurt anyone ever again. That was day one? That was day one. <laughs> day two of filming. Wow. Uh, I'm kidding. There was no Okay, day I was oh like, what God. happened the uh, next day? The entire production was scrapped. Here's another quote from Jared Rose. Did make it a full 24 hours? No. Jesus the following Christ. morning was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. I slept in a dressing room across from a toilet and awoke to the sound of multiple companies awkwardly shuffling around the studio, bereft of any work or purpose. My bosses, their bosses, and their bosses' bosses tried and failed to get the devs back on board, hoping against hope that they could salvage something out of the remaining resources. No one budged. Mm. Mm. And Mm. and Zoe Quinn said to Polygon, we were all exhausted and stressed out and had nothing to tap into. If we had tried again in that moment, I can't speak for others, but I know I wouldn't be doing my best work. I wouldn't be showing anything to the world that I'd want to show. I didn't see the point in it. Plus, I couldn't support something that Lesham touched or was allowed to touch. I mean, at least Game Jam itself lives on. Mm-hmm. That concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I would do? If I, if <laughs> I was the game devs, I'd be like, 
yeah, we'll do it again. 30,000 each. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I, it'd be like, oh, you really want to make it up to us? Okay, pay us all $30,000 to do this. And then be like, yeah. Well, there are reports of like, the they what they were there were some negotiations. I couldn't find this was all on a Reddit thread, so I don't know how valid it is because it's not in his article. Whatever but they were getting paid, it wasn't worth it. There was like, really, like, like uh, they pulled aside a couple of the devs and tried to be like, "What if we like keep this studio the way it is, bring in new people and bring in new new production company, and like a couple months from now, you guys come back and we." we consult with you on how to actually do a game jam. And there was like talk. And then like a couple of the devs, I think mainly Robin Arno uh, and Adrian Wallach were just like, I'm never working with you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have every right to. That's the correct answer. Yeah. Now indie developer, Akira Thompson, who was the show's creative consultant from the game development side, mm-hmm. uh, has this quote for Polygon. Early on, I was consulting with the Polaris people and telling them what a game jam is, the kind of community we are, and the kinds of people we should get involved with. Although it was pitched to me as a reality show, I said, no, it can't be that. It needs to be about allowing people to see how games are made and who makes them. What happened is the Polaris guys had the best of intentions, but once the money came in, the project got too big for them, and an outside production company was brought in from reality TV, and they know they wanted, what they wanted to get and what they wanted that was very specific. And none of us were privy to it. Yeah, they, they, they were playing a different yeah. language entirely. They didn't get it, and everyone else got fucked. I am angry. This was not what I signed up for. I got friends to come to this thing, and we all thought it was going to be something different, and now I look like an asshole. I look like an idiot. It turned into a massive failure, and my name is associated with it, and I am very angry. It's a shame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's the end of the Mountain Dew Game Jam. I have a little bit of aftermath. Okay. Uh, no one has seen a second of any footage. Yeah, that's I. I think I remember looking uh, for it when you first pitched this. Like a, like a well, is is Maker, years the ago. YouTube channel Maker still around? Nope. Um, mm. John Tron did resurrect the idea. Him and Tom Jackson resurrected the idea. There's a John Tron video called the Head to Head Game Jam, which is just like a John Tron. It's like a 30 minute John Tron video where they do a game jam. It's okay. Um. But one thing I purposefully left out at the beginning is that Maker Studios and Polaris are no more. Anybody require, Although not, like acquired their assets? Or? Not for the reasons you think. All right. You see. You get fall into hot water elsewhere. Lawsuits. Here we come. Yeah. Game, <laughs> no, Game Jam or the Mountain Dew Game Jam was not the biggest thing that Maker Studios had going in March of 2014 because Maker Studio and its subsidiaries were purchased by the Walt Disney Corporation in March of 2014 for $500 million. Why? Wow. <laughs> Bought mm-hmm. off by the mouse. <laughs> yeah. Wait, like, what made... That, that means that this footage is somewhere in fucking it's Disneyland. Disney Land. Yeah, it's yeah, going to come out yeah, with yeah. The, the, the VHS. It's, da- it's down there with, like, Walt Disney's, like... Uh, his head? His frozen head? Oh, uh, no, his anti-Semitic rants and, <laughs> you know, taped on... <laughs> It's like it must be right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> the Lost Footage Nazi of Mountain Dew Game Jam's in the same vault. The same vault. vault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> same vault. Uh, in 2017, Maker Studios and its subsidiaries were then absorbed into a newly formed Disney Digital Network. What? I mean, Disney could have just launched their own fucking. Yeah, but why Why launch our own when we could buy one? Yeah. Yes. If it's... Yeah. Yeah, sure. that was that was also back when Disney was gobbling everything up. They were, you're right, and they now were free. So. Well, money was free, and now that money is not free, Disney is selling it all off. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it crazy uh, though that like did Disney buy Star Wars for like seven billion dollars? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a lot. So yeah. Maker, Same with Marvel. So Maker Studios is worth one fourteenth of a Star Wars. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, Activision Blizzard was what sixty nine something like that. Billion? Like, well. Okay, so back in the day, that's what companies, that's the value that companies placed it at, but that's because they didn't understand the landscape. Mm-hmm. All they knew is yeah. that they they did not see a way to get to the level that Game Maker, or this game studio was at. Yeah. And it's just so much easier to buy one that is like the most established out there as opposed yeah. to try and retry and redo and I redo. I mean, like, like, like Marvel also, yeah. had to be the biggest bar- yeah, yeah. bargain ever. They, were, they right? also weren't the only one. Uh, Rooster Teeth, who recently got shut down, RIP, was purchased by Warner. Oh Is, no! Wait, Rooster that's the Teeth last people sh- you want to purchase. Yeah. You wait. Well, Rooster Teeth got shut down yeah. by Warner. Yeah, they got by bought Warner by. Brothers. They got by Warner Brothers. And were they, they got, shitheads? Yeah, they were. A lot of them. Yeah. Okay, they cool, were cool. But 
Like <laughs> not all, but of them, but, but yeah, a lot of like them. another Dang way to guys. think about it yeah. is like companies buy other companies, and the price they pay is basically how difficult they think it'll be to turn around. Yes, yeah, you know, right, so, or like to do it themselves. Before you realize it's not worth the effort. Yeah. Like, yeah, how yeah. easy is it to make money within this space? If it's not easy, then they will pay a shit ton of yeah, money for got it. Got that quick? Yeah, but the they, next quarter's they, coming. They see they see Star Wars, they see a bargain because they're like, we'll milk this for 10 yeah, years. Yeah, of course. People will mm-hmm. be so st- sick of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. We're going to have Solo and Boba Fett and <laughs> Boba Remember, and remember when Django George Lucas Fett? called Disney white slavers? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's because they, that's because they are. Dude. I know, but yeah. that was really... <laughs> I, do you, think, you think George Lucas goes to bed at night thinking like, <laughs> I've become Shmi. <laughs> You know, he just got, taking he got, into the desert. He got the bag, though. He, he did got the <laughs> bag. He got that bag. Uh, okay, now I'm going to throw to you for an update on Matty Lesham. Oh, oh boy, dude. This he still a has a piece. job, huh? Uh, <laughs> his bio on mattylesham.com. Uh, oh, God, dude. I want to. I want to. Sh- Here's his face. Yep. That's what he looks oh, like. Oh, that did look like I, what I imagined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I can picture that with a little headset on. Looks like, uh, what's his name? Kane from Command yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he looks just like Kane. Yeah. For those of you yeah. listening with no, He's off, with no the visual, he looks, he looks after just him. like Kane. Matty Lesham is the co-founder of New Mandate Films, a film and television production company created to mine the rich depth of Jewish history, literature, and stories from the Bible to the present day. That's not where I expected this. Yeah. New Mandate's <laughs> first You're telling me the film. sexist was religious? <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's right, that's yeah, nutty. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, their first feature film, The Survivor, directed by Academy Award winner Barry Levinson uh, from the movie Whoa. Wise Guys, Rain yeah. Man. And yeah. Diamond. Yeah. And he did The Bay. He did yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, Stripes. and uh, The Survivor debuted in North America on HBO um, on... April twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. Also, the name of a Jewish holiday. That I'm not going to try and pronounce. I think it's. I think it's Yom Hashoah. But that uh, sounds right. Uh, it was nominated for, uh, for an right. Emmy for outstanding television. Did he do Wag the Dog? Haunted by memories of guilt over good the crisis. Sorry, that was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is this is a description of his film, The Survivor. I was like, <laughs> I, it, I, I, scrolled, not his life. I scrolled. Yeah, it said haunted by the memories of guilt over the price of survival. <laughs> survival. He's not haunted by shit. Uh, <laughs> Half attempts to use high profile boxing match against Rocky Marciano to find the woman he fell in love with before the war. I was like, who who the fuck is this? <laughs> and I scroll down more and all I see is like the the commandant of a uh of Auschwitz. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. The, oh, his bio just lists lists the movie. Also, um yeah, that's, back, right. that's in it. The summary of the film is in his bio. Yeah, he also started sure. uh in two thousand five. Lesham founded the USA Rock, Paper, Scissors League and launched a nationwide tournament for sponsor Bud Light. The winner of the 2008 <laughs> finals was awarded a prize of $50,000. He shocked up with Bud Light. Um, yeah, so too, the company man. found was called Protagonist, which Rock. is Prot- the one that did that, this. I didn't have that written down, uh, but yeah, Protagonist is the name of it. They're a marketing company. and television production company that focuses on the creation of sponsored TV shows built around the sponsor's brand. Mm-hmm. Pepsi was the protagonist's he's still, he's, first client there you and go. remained with protagonist for more than 10 years. Mm-hmm. Wow, that didn't uh, scare them off? You know what is he's funny? He's still doing it. Mm. You know what is funny? Uh, he's founded it in 2003. Mm-hmm. Pepsi was their first client and remained with them for oh, 10 years. 10 years. What happened 10 years after that? <laughs> Game Jam happened. So that Oh, so that was that was their last uh yeah, I think collab I, know, with, I, I think yeah. I think Pepsi uh, pissed hit, them off. Yeah, Pepsi was like no more. <laughs> um but yeah, so like his thing was his entire company's thing was like they went to different major corporations and said, "Hey, do you want propaganda TV shows?" Yeah, yeah pretty much. Man, what a racket. That is a racket. <laughs> How could we have done that? <laughs> You know, yeah. like if any, if uh, uh, Mountain Dew, if you want a podcast, let me know. Yeah, be, like I'll do it. Slim Jim, we'll, we'll drink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, and I we'll, won't even scream at any women. No, <laughs> probably not. I can't promise, but yeah. probably not. Like, who do you think would be the best sponsor? Just like, oh man, just uh, just Slim Jim and balls. Tr- balls. Oh, my, yeah, uh, yeah. oh, come on, uh, that would be the best balls sponsor. Balls, Corona, dude. I was, I was I thinking like see balls in this fridge. Yeah. <gasps> you never know. True, <laughs> balls energy drink, the best yeah. energy drink out there. It really is. Oh. Oh, we never go wrong. Uh, we're talk- yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, I have- he made a rocks, paper, scissors tournament. Um, like I, that, that is a thing. Isn't yeah. it crazy that uh, the rocks, Somehow. paper, scissors dude won fifty thousand dollars, and the game developers are going to get a year supply of Mountain <laughs> Dew? <Dude. laughs> yeah, and a ski trip. That's wild. Like uh, that's. I mean, the the idea is just so far fetched. It's so off the mark. Yeah, for, mm-hmm. for video game creation, like I can see how he. Strolled it like like up and thought like 
he was he, he was treating it in this archaic way for a completely different industry. Okay. I had uh. written down Maddie Lesham seems to be a film producer now. That's all I have. So yeah. he expanded on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, um he's he's doing his thing out in Hollywood. Um be a grifter. <laughs> uh I don't I don't think I need to tell you where the rest of the people went. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. pretty obvious. Yep. Turns out that the YouTubers and game devs did just fine without the exposure that these were there were being promised. Yeah, uh, several of the devs wrote statements on their involvement. The main Although, three being Zoe Quinn, Robin Arno, and Adrian I Mollick. Th- those three students probably that they suffered uh, yeah. more than anyone. That that could have been a bigger break for them. But, yeah, dude, also, that, but that one also, kid got a virus on his USB stick. <laughs> Yeah. We also don't know who they are. They could be working in games. They USC could. has a very good game okay, design school. Anonymous. Yeah. In oh. addition, Jared Rosen, uh, I don't know where he is right now, but I'd like to thank him for his comprehensive write-up on his experiences. Yeah. There's an article I referenced a ton. I took a lot of verbatim quotes from because it's very well written. Uh, the article is on Indie Static, which I think no longer exists, but the article is called How the Most Expensive Game Jam in the Hi- in History Crashed and Burned in a Single Day, uh, which also spawned articles on other sites that I used. Uh, the Indie Game Reality TV show that went to hell on Kotaku <laughs> by Nathan Grayson, How Game Jam and Indie Game Dev Reality Show Collapsed on Its First Day of Filming on Polygon by Colin Campbell and Owen Good. And Game Jam reality show canceled as indies wouldn't put up with its shit on Eurogamer by Jeffrey Mat- Matulef. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so thank you to all of them. Now, uh, to address the Gamergate-sized elephant in the room, uh, the article, the indie game reality TV show that went to hell uh, on Kotaku by Nathan Grayson. Nathan Grayson later dated Zoe Quinn and was the subject of her Gamergate controversy. Yeah. And this article was used as an example of him giving her good press in exchange for sleeping with him. Uh, and I found a lot of... It was re- really the spark that lit the shit fire. Huh? Yeah, I read a lot of... Uh, well, one of many. I read a lot of Kotaku in action Reddit posts about how Maddie Lesham's actually a really good dude and Zoe Quinn's the devil. Oh, but Seb's still around. Uh, if you think that, you're wrong. Because you're like you're like a flat earther. There's too many first hand reports of this show being a disaster for <laughs> that to be framed good press. Hey, at least uh Gamergate never like came up again, right? Yeah, they're they're gone. <sighs> Not back. Don't listen to this. <laughs> What, uh, the squ- what the, Gamer Gators? The, Gamergate 2's coming. Yeah, the Squeakle. Coming out this year. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> wow, Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. Yeah, Who's yeah. it about this time? You didn't get my newsletter? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. The quarterly hasn't reached, oh, this, <laughs> hasn't reached my town yet. <laughs> this time, it's about a writing consulting firm named Sweet Baby. Yeah. We'll cover it in five well, years. We will cover it in a couple yeah. years. Yeah. 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 Um, uh. Also, huge thank you to one Reddit user uh, who's not a Gamer Gator. Uh, the only one I found that sure? wasn't a gamer gator. I don't know actually, <laughs> but this article he didn't have anything negative to say in this specific post. Right. Wrote a post, a great write up on this that I found information from on R slash hobby drama titled Sexism, Manufactured Drama and Mountain Dew, how one man killed a four day long four hundred thousand dollar game jam. Flushed away. Then now I read it through was also the first I learned about this and this is where I decided to do this episode, so Mm. Uh, and also YouTuber Many Kudos video, yeah. how one man ruined the four hundred thousand dollar man. That's right, Many Kudos did cover. Yeah, I love Many Kudos. Yep, <laughs> which was also helpful. And of course, as always, a thank you to Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Always, yeah, yeah, always, forever like, and ever. Yeah, I want. I wonder, <laughs> like, so, like with game jams, right? Like the the entire idea of a game jam, I can I understand what they're saying, which is like, oh, if we can press it down to a week, but really, what they're doing is in my mind, they're essentially truncating a majority of the expanded work that AAA studios have to do. Cause like, if you're making a game jam, you're not building the engine, Mm -hmm. right? You're not hand modeling any Mm -hmm. of the shit, right? You're using pre-rendered assets. And and no, they model. Oh, they model. Mm -hmm. They do. Sometimes, sometimes there are things that are a little bit more proof or like temp, like, you know, it depends. depends. It's like I said, sometimes there's game jams where it's like one person will make a game and they might use pre-made assets. Yeah. And pre-made music, but I've sure seen idea, but... I've seen game jams where it's like a hundred people are participating, but only six games come out of it, and each team has like fifteen okay. to twenty people. Yeah, 
And so there's like musicians who spend three yeah. days writing music so and modelers so who spend like, three days. What's taking GTA Six so long? Um, oh, they're man. not. They're all working from home. That's the problem. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Now, that's even though most said. game jams are done over okay. the, the, the problem with G, the problem why GTA Six is taking so long, we all know the answer, which is they have unlimited money. Yep, <laughs> they are <laughs> polishing it to be the most pristine diamond of all time. Of I mean, course, yeah, I, yeah. They, no, I know they, they need a game that is good enough to convince everyone to leave GTA Five, GTA Five online <laughs> yeah. to GTA Six, which it, is really yeah, I don't hard. envy anyone in yeah. that position. And at, this, at this point too, like you gotta remember GTA five runs on a potato. Right, yeah. like yeah. so, you need GTA Six to be so optimized it, it could run up, run on a potato. I know, I know, we got uh, the end, of, but like the the you've yeah. probably seen the 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 narrative going on, and the people are calling GTA Six like the most important. I was gonna say release in addition like, or to launch ever because of the state to, of the industry. In right addition now. to what Chris said, if GTA Six Collapsing. is a failure, the entire video game industry yep. is going on. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, the, the, the entire the entire see, thing yeah. is propped. It's like a toothpick <laughs> holding up a city. Yeah. And if GTA Six <laughs> snaps, we're all dead. Yeah. All they gotta yeah. do, you know, what they gotta do. All they gotta do is make a Red Dead Redemption three. Uh, I don't They're think gonna that's gonna Dude, happen. I think, all, wait, I, think hey, I, I love Red Dead like to death, but it's like that's uh, it, it's still that game only only sells around sixty to eighty million copies. When GTA five or GTA is selling around like what a hundred and eighty million, million. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they sold more copies of GTA than there are people alive on Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I bought it. How many times? Four. Guess what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I bought I bought it three times. Guess yeah. what? So you bought it. Four. I, well, I am the yeah, minority. The last one was just a ten dollar upgrade for the PS Five one, but yeah, I yeah. did three sixty PS Four PC, and then I am the minority. Guess yeah. how many copies I have purchased? Zero. You got it. Guess how many times I played the campaign? Once. Zero. Really? I don't know how it ends. You've played through all the other. GTAs. You should play GTA Five. Yeah, it's GTA one 5. of the best <laughs> games ever made. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, 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 that's the problem. I can't yeah. say that. No, dude. All I already know what my main character's name is. His name. <laughs> Oh no! Actually, they fuck, practically I already gave remember. copies of that game away for a while. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, <laughs> dude, my my character's name is Claude Speed. All right, mm-hmm. <laughs> Claude Speed and Tommy Versetti. <laughs> Main, mainly, mainly Claude Speed. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, dude, GTA Three was enough for me. <laughs> Two thousand and one. Yeah, yeah dude, I, I've stopped. <laughs> did you play Red uh, Dead Two? I did. Masterful. Uh, Red Dead Red Two is a masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> it, it's As what, Nakey Jake said in his video that came out today, it is uh it is Rockstar's opus. Yeah. Magnum opus. Yeah. In, that's uh, the other thing in terms of the, sorry, narrative. the last thing I'll say is like GTA six also has to live up to that expectation as well. Not that just GTA the, five, but that Red is Dead the best two. that is not only right. the best written video game of all time, but it's one of the best written like pieces, pieces of media, media yeah. ever. Yeah, I completely uh, agree. Uh, we should, like a fiction. You know what we should do? Yeah. We should close this out and then we could all sit here and talk for the next forty five yeah. minutes about how much we love this <laughs> yeah, shit. No, it's, <laughs> all right. Sipping our Mountain Dew. That's a yeah, apologies to everybody. I, I wanted to st- on the way home earlier just grab a bunch of Mountain Dew and oh, I have I diabetes. I would have gotten you a diet one. Diet Mountain Dew? Diet Mountain Dew? That's Ew. worse than water. Yeah. <laughs> we you trying to kill him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. No, this this was a fun little short punch your topic. Yeah. I want to do more of these. I love it. Because my next one is also going to be like an hour or so. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, almost equally annoying to read about. <laughs> yep. In a, in a I know what it's least. about. Yeah. Uh, let me know when you want to do uh, the update to the Billy Mitchell trial. It, oh it finally God. resolved. Uh, yeah. I, I, oh, I think uh, on November. The, November. Yeah. We'll be doing it in right. November. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I remember when we did the update, uh, I was like, we're going to put a pin in this for now because uh, yeah. it came to a resolution. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, no spoilers. Don't want to spoil I mean, it. I know, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, plugs. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Thank you for listening. I apologize. Uh, I decided to finally host an episode after Randy doing it for like two years straight, and <laughs> then I got a cold, so my voice is a little <laughs> shaky. But A little hoarse. Yeah. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to hear more topics you this can is go, a unique one there's not a yeah. lot of things applicable there were not can, a lot of related things yeah. the closest one is probably the the one advent you, rising the advent <laughs> rising yeah. contest you mentioned yeah, yeah. for whatever reason or, or, when, well, yeah, they're, they're just, when you told me what this episode right. was my immediate thought was the the, the choose a mountain dew flavor where granny yeah. gush and <laughs> no <laughs> fapple sierra mist <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the best. <laughs> yeah where hitler did nothing wrong hitler did it, nothing yeah. wrong granny gush and sierra mist were the top three yeah. choices yeah. I thought yeah. that that's what this is about, and I was like, oh, I love it. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. um, yeah, you can find those episodes, yeah. the episode we mentioned, and more on hotbuttoncast.com. Yep. Also on all the podcast services. 
Uh, and you can subscribe there. Uh, we also have our socials, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, you can follow those and find out when our episodes come out. Uh, and that's it. Good night, all. Good night. Do the do. Uh, do the do. Do the do. Uh-huh.